The six healing sounds are often thought of as being Taoist in origin by Western practitioners, largely due to its popularization by Mantak Chia. The fact is, however, according to the late Nan Huai Jin, of whom very little is known in English-speaking countries, the practice was introduced into China along with the Buddhist teachings, later to be adopted by Taoists, who at the time were not at all concerned with esoteric or tantric practices, but rather the philosophy of simplicity of way. It is also for this reason that the late Master Nan taught that the Chinese characters for the sounds are not to be pronounced in the Mandarin way, as most do today, but either in Cantonese, Hakka or Taiwanese dialects, as these were the official languages of China at the time. Also, he taught that the sounds are to be thought of as tips to guide the way that one exhales in order to release bad qi or karma from each of the organ systems. No actual intonation of the vowel aspect should be produced and they should be performed as silently as possible. It is not the sound that initiates the healing, but the shape of the tongue and movement of the respiratory muscles that stimulates the organs into action. In Chinese medicine, as also in Ayurveda, the tongue is mapped out to correspond to the various organs of the body. This has relevance when performing the six breaths, as the mouth shape stimulates one particular region of the tongue. When we combine that with the motion of the breathing, we are able to stimulate the particular organ that corresponds to the part of the tongue being stimulated. The six breaths do not heal by themselves, but should be used as a preparation for meditation, wherein the real healing occurs. They can be performed as little as once or a few times, each followed by a short period of meditative breathing, or they can be performed consecutively followed by a longer session of meditation. Personally, I would recommend the former method for beginners, as the stagnant chi and karma being released may be harder to manage. So now that we have acknowledged that the six breaths should be thought of as breathing exercises rather than sounds, allow me to describe the performance of each one in detail. Each of the breaths should be accompanied with a slight upward tilting of the chin upon exhalation and likewise a drawing inward of the jaw during exhalation. For the heart, ho. As you inhale in preparation, let the tip of the tongue sit gently against the palate just behind the two front teeth while drawing your chin inward. As you breathe out, the tongue disengages from this spot yet remains pointed upward as your chin pushes slightly upward. For the lungs, see. This time as you exhale, the tip of the tongue sits against the two bottom front teeth, a gap forming between the top and bottom rows. The sides of the mouth curl back and upward as though you are smiling. For the stomach, foo. The bottom lip is pursed as though blowing out a candle. As you exhale, the upward motion of the chin completes the silent vowel portion of the breath. Ooh. For the triple burner or endocrine system, hey, the tongue relaxes so that the throat may be open as the chin tilts upward. This breath focuses on thyroid. For the liver, hoi, with the edges of the mouth where the top and bottom lips meet, pinching in toward the sides of the tongue. 
The silent vowel portion of the breath comes naturally as the chin tilts upward. For the kidneys, chuoi. Similar to the last, the edges of the mouth pinch inward, however the bottom lip is extended out to the front. This gives an effect of the muscles of the mouth pinching in toward the tongue, this time further back. Again, the silent vowel, woi, naturally occurs as a result of the chin tilting upward as you exhale. Remember that even though I have been vocalizing each vowel portion of the sounds, this is not to be done in practice, as the sounds are to be pronounced silently. Those familiar with other methods may be wondering why in this order? After all, the more popular versions follow the creative cycle of the five elements. This is not necessary here due to the nature of how the, this breathing exercise works on the body. Anatomical position in both the internal organs themselves as well as their correspondences on the tongue has more significance in this situation than superstitious beliefs. We begin with the center of the top of the tongue, which is for the heart, proceed to outward, the lungs, then lower the stomach, then the whole triple burner because we have reached the center of the tongue, i.e. the stomach. Then we complete with the liver, then down to the kidneys. The six healing sounds, or more correctly, the six ways of exhalation can be very useful along one's life journey. However, much misunderstanding and superstition have been added to a once simple practice. I hope that I have brought clarity to something useful that has become overly mystified through hundreds of years. <laughs>